Manta, what have you done? You took out Grogu's last line of defense, angered the remnants of the Empire, oh, and gave good old Pelpy exactly what he needed to return to the galaxy. What have I done? If you'd have just left those poor Nikto guards alone, who were good and hired to protect the child you care so much about, none of this would be happening. You thought those Nikto guards were bad too, huh? I mean, who would keep a baby locked away like they did? Boy, do we have some stuff to talk about today. I know what you're saying, the Nikto guards were definitely the bad guys. I mean, look at them. Spiky face and eyes with a menacing intent. These guys are the definition of evil! Well, today I'm gonna teach you a little thing called context, and that context matters. We can't judge books by their covers. When we meet our supposed villains, it's when IG-8 waltzes in, guns blazed. On top of that, the Mando storms in, adding more fire to the already intense firefight. Now, I wanna ask you, if somebody came into your home and the first thing they said was, immediately give me the asset. After who knows how many others have tried, what would you do? Of course, you'd raise your weapons and fight back. From the looks of things, they're just trying to defend their home, which has been attacked over and over again, all because of this asset. Does that sound evil to you? The other question to ask is, why are they protecting Baby Yoda? Uh, I mean, Grogu. After being under assault time after time, you'd think that they would give up. Whoever wants him can have him. Good riddance. Also, at this point, they have to know what they're holding is worth some sweet cash. So why not end this, turn Grogu into the Empire themselves, and collect? Well, that would just end the show and we'd get the classic created by George Lucas title, but the true reason why the Nikto guards don't turn Grogu into the Empire is because it's their job to protect the child. The money the Empire is offering is nowhere near the payday they already received. So who hired them? Well, we know a certain somebody who needs a hand. The last time we saw Mace Windu, he was betrayed by the young Skywalker, humiliated and sent careening out of a high-rise window with electricity coursing through his veins. Most thought this was Windu's end, but like our theory explains, Mace Windu survived. Was he the one who rescued Grogu from the temple before Anakin went all Vader on it? I'm not so sure about that. When Ahsoka meets Grogu for the first time, she mentions that after Grogu was taken from the temple, his memories become dark. For me, dark referred to his mind becoming clouded by the dark side. Now who could do something like that? Hmm, all right, none other than the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, Emperor Palpatine. In the book Star Wars Aftermath, we learn that before good old Sheev declared the end of the Republic, he was already creating a contingency plan for his untimely demise. Based on recent canon, I believe cloning and essence transfer as well. So I believe it was Palpatine who took Grogu from the temple to one day use his high M count for misdeeds that would surely affect the entire galaxy. That is, until Windu tried to lend a hand. Man, that won't ever get old. Now, Palpatine, he doesn't have time to watch over a kid, so he likely passed the child on to Moff Gideon, who then passed him on to some other subordinate. In a rescue attempt, that subordinate met the wrath of Mace Windu, who has a whole lot of pent-up anger by now. So where do the Nikto guards play into this? Well, unlike Din Djarin, Mace is smart and knows the Empire is on the hunt for Jedi, so the two together make zero sense. Rather than put him and the child at risk, Mace put the child where no one would think, with the savage-looking Nikto guards. My theory is he hired the Nikto guards to protect Grogu with their life until the day he could return. Mace didn't account for one thing, though. The Mandalorian. Mando, since you've rescued the child, what has your life been like? You've had every bounty hunter on your tail after you, and your Beskar armored friends laid waste to the guild on Navarro. You nearly lost your life, and you got your friend Quill's life cut short. The Mandalorian covert was exposed, and nothing was left besides empty halls of armor. The Razor Crest is no more. Grogu has been captured by Moff Gideon's band of Iron Men. What more do I need to say? All of this is your fault. You do realize that if you hadn't stepped in, Grogu would be sleeping soundly, rather than having needles poked around his sweet little body. But here we are, Mando. Here we are. The real villain in this story is you, and the worst is yet to come. As we saw in episode 4 of the recent Mando season, the Empire is working on cloning a Force sensitive. This could be Snoke, and by connection, Mr. Palpatine, who resided in a decrepit clone body in episode 9. Whatever the case may be, Moff Gideon has exactly what he needs right in the palm of his hands, because the Mando took out the one thing that stood in his way, the Nikto Guards. Mando, 
Din, next time you have a bounty come your way and you decide to be the hero, don't. Just please don't. Just walk away and pretend you saw nothing. We'll all be better off. Deal. Well, no point harping on the past. We only can work towards the future. And I want to hear about it all from you. Where do you think the rest of this season of The Mandalorian is heading? Let's chat in the comments down below and be sure to like and subscribe for more CBR. As always, thanks for watching.